Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to day two of live coverage. This is theCUBE's exclusive analysis coverage of AWS reInvent 2017. I'm John Furrier, co-host on set one with Stu Miniman here, analyst at Wikibon, and we got two sets here at Amazon Reader. First time we've done two sets, so much content. We have our director set with uh, captain's chairs over there getting all the community content and all the folks who are doing the innovation here at AWS. Stu, a lot to talk about. We've had companies come through, tell us about their, their innovation with AWS, but the bottom line is Andy Jassy's keynote just went off. I mean, he's like the Energizer bunny. He keeps going and going and going. Announcement after announcement. Um, I broke that Forbes story, kind of laid out what, what ended up turning out to be the core messaging. Tons of stories on siliconangle.com around Andy Jassy's exclusive interview that we had about a week and a half ago prior to reInvent. Um, he's geared up, man. He's giddy up, as they say, his favorite word, and he, he's taken on the competition. He took Oracle head on and called Oracle a company that abuses their customers. Okay, that was, that was hardcore abuse. He used the word abuse, and that, in this culture, it's like, he should have said predator. I mean, he's that kind of uh, competitive vibe. Microsoft kind of called out vendor two on the chart, just laying out the sets of services. Amazon putting the aggressive, we're real stamp out there. What's you, your thoughts? I mean, yeah. you got the only analysis. So first of all, yeah, John, uh, this show is always impressive. One that one of the ones I look forward to more than almost anything for the entire year. Uh, Forty-three thousand people here. I spent the last day and a half in the analyst sessions, and there wasn't a single analyst that was like ho hum. Um, there are so many announcements, and even you know you go down the list, and the number like you know seventy third announcement on there, you're like, oh, I'm not sure. Oh, there's this group of customers that's been waiting for them, and it's going to transform their business. It's potentially going to crush you know certain parts of the industry. Um, there's so much happening. There's lots of fanboys here, and it's tough not to just get you know exuberant about what's going on. Um, surprised to see Andy punching a little bit of the competitor. Sure, he takes jabs at Larry Ellison every year. You know the Red Stack stuff. You know database, you know, they're making huge uh, pieces on the migration, but you know, talking a little bit more about you know, Google and Microsoft, oh, well, they, they must be real competitors, a lot of people are saying, if they're actually putting them up there, uh, going through the numbers. So many things we want to dig into here and throughout the next two days. Yeah, I mean, the fact that he talks about the competitors means that it's still on his mind, you know, although they're full steam ahead. The thing about Jassy, though, um, getting to know him, his style is not just talk, he walks it more than he talks. So he'll only talk trash if he's got a solution in his back pocket. And what's different this year is the bravado has gone up and the rhetoric around Oracle specifically has been really hardcore. I mean, he called them an abusive partner to their customers. I mean, that is just, that's a, uh, that's a line in the sand, that's, those are fighting words. But then he goes on stage and essentially rolls out a series of database options. He spent a lot of time talking about databases too in his keynote. John, we got Aurora serverless now. I mean, totally talking about, you know, uh, hey, you know, how many companies, you know, how many resources do you have focused on, you know, managing the infrastructure under your database? So RDMS paired with serverless, you know, that, that absolutely, you know, game changer. Uh, people are super excited about it. Uh, there's, there's, you know, so much going on. Um, but I mean, John, just take alone the one thing they put up, uh, you know, it was one of the Gartner slides, and it was like, oh, you know, what, what's Amazon at now? 44% up from like 39%, so there's talk about growth rates and everything like that. Amazon chugging along, dominant in their space, yeah. uh, you know, in, in, in so many pieces. That's, so, that's the one critique I would give Jassy. The one thing I don't like about his keynote, and, and I don't like in general about Amazon, is they talk new guard, new guard, old guard is bad. They're using Gartner slides too. I mean, you couldn't get old guard than Gartner. Magic Quadrant has nothing to do with the presentation. It was infrastructure as a service, hint, didn't include platform as a service, didn't include SaaS. I mean, they're using the wrong scoreboard. Now, I think he throws it up there because buyers kind of use Gardner as kind of a bellwether, but they're not, they're old guard. He's got to get better stats. Yeah. I'm pressuring them to get the stats. What is the scoreboard for cloud? Yeah, well, John, you know, uh, one of the things we always look at, there's two days of keynotes. Today's really the enterprise. 
enterprise, uh, Andy says, we're in kind of the early part of massive adoption from enterprise, so he's talking enterprise speak, and yeah, they go to the Gartner Magic Quadrant, absolutely, it's, you know, John, what's happening in the software world? I mean, that's, that's really where this is, is the change of what's happening in software. Amazon's at the vanguard. Uh, they, there was plenty of things that I'm sure developers will love here, but it wasn't the big focus of today's uh, yeah, I keynote. mean, to me, the, the canary in the coal mine is developers. The canary in the coal mine for the big mega trends are also venture capitalists. The canary in the coal mine are the startup entrepreneurs, those alpha, alpha uh, entrepreneurs. And last night, we had a chance to sat down multiple one-on-ones with some venture capitalists. We had some here on theCUBE. Then we went to the Gray Lock Amplify and the IVP party uh, and had a chance to talk to some people. The general sentiment is this, we are in a sea change, it's like a tsunami. The whole beach is exposed before the big wave comes in, Stu, and the top venture capitalists like Greylock and, and others are looking at this going, the models have changed. The funding model, the dynamics, and everyone's going, holy shit. And that's where, the, that's where this renaissance in software development's happening. And the, the top guys on the entrepreneurial side are saying, look at the new way to do it is take less funding, I need to get in market fast with the product, and I need a partner that's going to get me. The rest of the market is deer in the headlights, too. They're like, wait a minute, do I compete with Amazon? Do I party with Amazon? What cloud do I use? They get caught rearranging the deck chairs and they're taking their eye off the ball, which is software. Okay. So John, the, the struggle I've been hearing, you know, you talked to a bunch of Amazon customers already this week. If you're in the enterprise and you're building your strategy, um, you got to write it on, an, on a whiteboard or an etch and sketch because things are changing so fast. The thing I was really looking forward to is what were they going to be in Kubernetes and you know, serverless, huge promise, what are they delivering, what, what's the proof point, and have to say, definitely impressed with what I saw so far. What's the top, I mean a lot of, first of all, you're in the analyst meeting and I, I heard feedback from the analyst like, man, we can't even comprehend all these things. So I want you to boil it down for the folks not here, and they're going to read some blog posts on SiliconANGLE, a lot of coverage to go through, certainly on theCUBE and SiliconANGLE Wikibon. Bottom line, what's the executive summary in your mind, Stu? What should people pay attention to? What's the most important story? Um, there, it is impossible to give one story to everyone, but let, let, me, let me start with, uh, Andy lays out uh, in, in your interview for Forbes and what he talked about in the keynote, uh, kind of the compute uh, continuum. So if, you talked, if you're just using compute instances, there's some new big ones. If you want your AI uh, stuff, your big data, um, they, they've got new compute instances. The bare metal offering is basically the fruits of what they had to do to be able to get VMware on AWS to work, and they're now making that same instance uh, available for those uh, that want to be able to do other things with it, bring their own hypervisor, things like that. I can tell you, it's a massive, uh, it's like 72 logical cores, it's huge amounts of memory, and it is going to be wicked expensive because it's not like most of the, the instances with Amazon, oh, pick between these six versions, it's one. Here's a server, and it's a big server. It's going to be really expensive. We're going to be digging with, with a couple of VMware executives on that piece. Uh, but the, the newer stuff, containers. Uh, for last year we've been hearing Amazon's behind on Kubernetes, Amazon's behind on Kubernetes. They joined the CNCF a couple of months, now they have EKS. So fully supporting Kubernetes, but here's the nuance. I talked to uh, the people that run that group and ECS is not going away. They're, 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 we, we've seen all the time is they say, oh, yeah, here's the standard and we're going to fully embrace it, but our proprietary version. Kubernetes doesn't scale the way you need. You got to do our things. Kubernetes, we can't integrate it with all our services. You know, use our service. And Andy was like, hey, we're going to give you choice. Underneath that, they had, uh, it, it's Farpoint, is really, I'm sorry, Fargate. Uh, Fargate is the underlying level that basically allows me to take, rather than uh, you know, managing at the server level, which really I was managing you know, virtualization uh, before, now I'm managing at the compute level. Uh, when containers came out and Docker was buzzing, it was, this is the new atomic you know, instance of how we manage things, and Fargate really cool down at that lower level. So you, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, I, I keep saying, yeah, Fargate at the bottom level. Now I've got ECS or Kubernetes, and then I've got things like Istio uh, on top of that. You and I are going to be at the CNCF show next week, Kubernetes, KubeCon, and everything like that. I'm sure Amazon's going to suck a lot of the air out of that um, with, with with what they're doing. And you know, gosh, I haven't even talked about serverless yet. So I got, I mean, first of all, I mean, this is first of all, it's hard to boil it down. Like you yeah. said, you can't, you can't even breathe at this point. It's so exciting, but the thing that, that, that is the success of Amazon also could be an Achilles heel, because that's complexity. So I noticed the messaging was everything to everyone, or is everything to everything. They got this vibe going on. Everything where is everything, yes. Everything, 
is everything. But a lot of people have been criticizing the software business or on the community side, of the supplier side, of trying to be everything to everyone. Yeah. Okay? But that's what Amazon's doing, right? They're basically saying, we're going to give you everything, but it's not mandated that you choose one. Yeah. So talk about that dynamic, because the, the people are critiquing them and saying, well, they're just throwing all this stuff out there, it's just a feature. Yeah. Yeah, no, it it, it, it's a great point, and right, if you look at traditional enterprise vendors, it was, oh my God, look at that catalog and all the thousands and thousands of SKUs that are out there. Um, I believe the number I heard is, in the Amazon services, there's like 30,000 services out there, and how do you as a company manage with that. I talked to one global web company and I gave that, that yeah, how do you keep up with this? How do you know what to do? And he's like, well, we reached a certain price point. I've got two TAMs. They help us work through this. There's no way any one person or even any company can be an expert on this. That's where Amazon needs to get consultative. Uh, yeah. That's where SIs need to come in. But uh, I'll tee up, that's where serverless really comes in because there's certain pieces that, uh, as Andy talked about in the keynote, you know, Lambda is going everywhere. It's getting integrated into uh, the environment. There's certain pieces of the stack that before I needed to choose my compute instance, I need to figure out how much memory, I have to do all these kind of things. If I choose a certain layer uh, of, of integration, uh, Amazon's going to take care of those things underneath. So absolutely, they hear loud and clear that they want to simplify things. Uh, what was it, last year, LightSail was one of the big announcements. There's so many things. Uh, their spot instances had a huge growth to be able to drive down costs uh, this year. So, I mean, dozens and dozens uh, of features that Andy talked about this morning. Um, serverless, John, really, uh, you know, massive wave. Um, it, it's, you know, right, so it's leave about, everything let's, let's, behind. Let's but. connect the dots, because there's a lot to talk about. We got Werner Vogel's keynote tomorrow. That should be really geeky and tech under the hood. But what Jassy's putting out there is a lot of the stuff you're mentioning, but also he's got a wireless camera for facial recognition. They got Transcribe, Recognition, Poly, Lex. So the sets of services uh, that are new, and new guard-like, and the use cases from this are interesting. There's a lot of different connective devices, so you see a little IoT. So they're kind of laying out, like, this is the landscape. You know, we're going to do StatCast for MLB and NFL. We got uh, edge devices, you know, databases for S3. The programming model, Stu, the, the new assembly model, it's very modular. This is like the building blocks approach. I mean, it's not just the, uh, the Lambda and the S3, you got cameras, wireless cameras that do facial recognition and Right, uh, because John, I talked to a couple of customers that are doing serverless and they're working with Amazon, and it's like, oh, well, where do you think of serverless functions as a service? And they're like, well, really, I have, you know, one customer was like, I have a bunch of my own services and I have APIs I write, and now I can have uh, it just call into various Amazon services. So it makes, uh, the, 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 John, the, the whole API economy that we've been talking about for many years, uh, you know, this is really, uh, you know, Amazon having this come to fruition. I should be able to write my own API APIs that can program to many of Amazon's APIs. Uh, Dave Vellante was here, I'm sure he'd be talking about API creep uh, because there's so many pieces. Uh, but you know, uh, Amazon, you know, Andy's saying we have everything of the best. Um, I think a lot of he, he's trying to attack there. Um, many customers we talk to, they're going multi-cloud. What does that really mean? Yeah. It's Amazon the primary, when are they using Google, Microsoft, Oracle, IBM? Uh, so, so there's you know, so many pieces, but uh, yeah. I mean, Stu, what's impressive to me is, I mean, we, I get called a fanboy all the time, but I just call as I see it, Amazon is crushing everyone else, in my opinion. No doubt, there's no doubt about it. And when we get more data from Microsoft or Google, then we'll, we, we'll compare, but, you know, and Oracle, they're not even talking. So like, they're hiding, they're, they're, they're building it again. The, the tsunami's coming, the war is here. No doubt there's a cloud war, and Microsoft is in it to win it. Google's hardcore, so this is going to game on. But what Amazon's doing is they're integrating new kinds of interactivity. You start to see Twitch more here. You see the NFL demo on stage that Andy did. The actual data that they're getting from the sensors, they're integrating into the application. So, yet Goldman Sachs never goes on stage and does a testimonial. The guy's basically giving a love fest for Amazon. That's Goldman Sachs. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, John. you have new software models that are coming. This is something I think nobody's seeing. I think you talk to the hardcore dudes, they, the infrastructure's now with serverless is enabling creativity, and I think this renaissance oh. is for real. John, you, you nailed something. It's Sandy Carter, who you know, you know have had on theCUBE many times, joined Amazon uh, within the last year, talked about how 
Amazon, not just AWS, but Amazon is helping customers with you know, the buzzword digital transformation, but how do you innovate? And it's not just Amazon Web Services, there's so many things that the broader Amazon portfolio can tie into, uh, you know, and absolutely, you know, it's impressive, because uh, customers always said, it used to be like, oh, how can I have like, you know, a network that's kind of like Google's? Now it's how can I innovate like Amazon? Yeah. Well, Stu, we go to all the shows. We didn't go to Oracle Open World this year. Again, they're putting they're kind of silent right now because they don't want to talk to the to the press because they're gearing up. You got Oracle, Microsoft certainly very aggressive, more aggressive than Oracle. But Jassy's laying the line in the sand, so we're going to watch the new guard, old guard thing play out. Microsoft is absolutely moving the needle. They are coming up to, to Amazon. There's no doubt that they're in the, in the sites, in the rear view mirror. I think everyone else is really gearing up. You got Alibaba Cloud in China coming to the US. This is going to be exciting. The cloud game has got so much action in it. It's got the geeky under the hood and the sexiness of the applications too. I'm really super excited. Yeah, uh, there, there's just so much information. You know, choose your category, choose where you're going. Uh, you, you know, there is just no shortage. Everybody's geeking out. You know, the big complaint is like, oh, there's too many people. If you go standby, you have to like, you go an hour ahead of time and it's still there. And it's spread out, you know, the Aria and the MGM, there's all these things there. You know, we're here at the heart of what, what used to be the one facility, and now it's just spread out so yeah. much. So you really need to kind of, you know, choose your focus, dig on in, and you know, gosh, we got so many interviews. And Stu, we're going to want to wrap this up by saying the company that's behind us, you can't see, or maybe you'll be able to see it in the shot, is that win, that's winning, that no one's talking about much because they're just winning, is Intel. They sell more chips, they sell more compute. The compute game is where it's at. So you've got Intel kind of quietly, you know, under the surface, and just this growth is only going to help Moore's Law yeah, and John, it's, everything else. It's just like the old Intel inside. You know, <laughs> Amazon does more. They're, they're buying more compute, whether that you know, standard compute, it's containers, yeah. or it's serverless. At the end of the day, there's some you know, Intel chips underneath almost all of it today. Well, Intel's not putting their strategy up, but it's clear to me through the observe, observation and talking to them is that they're targeting the cloud as that new inside moment. They want to power the top clouds. They already are. They're kind of quietly keeping, keeping, their, keeping their nose clean and just coming head down and power all those clouds. Hey, theCUBE here, powering all the data here at AWS reInvent. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. Day two kickoff, more great coverage. Stay with us. Two sets here in Las Vegas. We'll be right back. <laughs>